Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to create some buttons that work on touch devices such as smartphones as well as still working inside of a standalone build for something like Windows or Mac. And there are a lot of ways to do this. I think the most common way a lot of people use is just using the Unity GUI system. We're going to try something a little bit different here. Since we're doing the whole 2D thing, let's go ahead and work with some sprites. So to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and create something to move around. And of course, I always start off with a cube. I'm going to want the game view so I can set this up. And I'm going to switch over to a 16 by 9 because the device I'm working on is that. And for some reason, mine is not there. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and add it. Very bizarre. I've never seen it not there before. But anyway, we've got one now. So I've got my cube. I'm just going to make sure it's in the center of my screen. I'm probably actually going to move it a little bit closer before I start doing anything with it. We'll go to 2D mode. And we'll move it to about there. We'll jump back into 2D mode and let's start working with some sprites. So let's have one that moves it up and down. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new sprite. And what kind do we want here? Let's do a triangle. I'll just leave it called triangle. I'm going to go ahead, drop it into the scene. And we can see it's right in the front here. We need to move that over. Now we also need to make it bigger. Uh, let's try a two. The smaller the number, the bigger it is on the screen. Uh, that might be a little too big, but that's fine. We can work with that. I'm going to go ahead, duplicate this, and let's actually call this one up. And we'll call the next one down. I'll rotate the down one 180 degrees on the Z, so it, well, points down. And then let's select both of them and kind of move them over to the edge of the screen. And the logic behind is when I push the down arrow, it'll, the cube will move down. When I push the up arrow, the cube will move up. Let's also go ahead and change the color of the cube. So I'll create a material. And I'm just going to call it cube. I'll select that cube. Go ahead, drag and drop it on. I'm not going to do anything with it. I just want a, a, a material that I'm allowed to edit. And let's also go ahead and create one more sprite for color changes. And for this one, let's, let's do circles for this one. And the same sort of thing. I'm just going to put them on the side here. Well, let's put them down here. And again, I want that to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and select the sprite. Is three good enough? Yeah. Remember, this has to be big enough not only to visually see on the screen, but also be able to touch it and have it change. And we'll do two of these as well. And we'll call this one red. This one can be green. And I'm just going to use the actual color picker here to pick the color. This is the green one, so we'll go green. This is the red one, so we will go red. Great. Everything in our scene is set up. All we need now are the scripts. I'm going to create a folder, and I wanted a folder, not an actual script. <laughs> and we'll jump in there, and let's work with the color change first. So I'm going to create a new script called Color Change. I'm going to go ahead, open this up. Let's go ahead, we'll clear it out. And I want to make sure this doesn't get put on the same game object twice. Just allow multiple component. And we're going to be working with the sprite renderer, at least the color that I'm getting from the sprite renderer. So I'm going to make sure that's there as well. And I just realized I actually need colliders for this to work as well. Uh, depending on the shape you're using, you're going to need different colliders. I'll add a component and let's do circle colliders. And while we're at it, let's do the up and down. There we go. So we got colliders on everything now. And since I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and drag the script on as well. 
All right. So we're going to be changing the color. We're going to be changing the color based on the color that's set in our sprite renderer. Like I said before, this color right here. So the first thing I want to grab is a target. Now I want this to be exposed in the inspector. And to change the color, we need to go ahead and grab the mesh renderer, which I'm just going to call target. And then I also need a private field for our sprite renderer, which I'll call S rend. So I'll come down to awake. I want to make sure I have S rend pointing to my sprite renderer. There we go. We have that set up now. And the way we're going to look at today for getting the, the touches, I'm going to be using the on mouse down event. So void on mouse down. You can go ahead and look at the other ones like on mouse up. There's a lot of stuff you can actually do with this here. When you press down, you can go ahead and set some Boolean value. Then when you have a mouse up event, check to see if the Boolean values would set. That way you know if um, when they press down and released, if it was on the same game object or not. But I just want to keep it super simple. We're just going to use on mouse down. So what happens when they click this? First off, I'm going to go ahead, debug log, and let's just go ahead and put the name of this game object out. I'll save that off. We'll jump back into Unity and we'll have to go fix some errors. And I went ahead and looked for the wrong component. I want the sprite renderer, not the mesh filter. Thinking about the target. All right, so we'll save that off. We'll jump back in. Wait for the error to go away. There we go. And let's just quickly start it up and click on our circles. They should be working as far as the colors go. If we watch down the bottom here, green, red, green, red. Great. So we've got the event. Let's actually go ahead and do something with it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the target dot get component component. We now want actually, so we already, we already have the mesh renderer. We should just be able to say material dot color is equal to sren dot color. We'll save that off, come back in and let's check this out. So I hit the green and hitting the green in the scene view does nothing. Oh, we got a, an error because we did not assign what we want to change the color, of, which is the cube. I'm going to select both of them, drag the cube in, start it back up. And now when we click, we can change the color of the cube. Great. Let's do the movement one real quick. I'll create another C sharp script and let's call it move cube. Let's go ahead, open that up in model develop. And I'm going to create an enumerator, or sorry, an enum for the movement direction, which I will call direction. And we only have two buttons, so I'm only gonna have two values. So I'm gonna have up and down. Then I'll come into the move script, and I wanna go ahead and create a serialized field. Type is going to be direction, which I will call dir. This just exposes that enum force in the inspector. I'm also going to need a target. And since we're going to be moving this target, I'm going to go ahead and grab its transform. I'm still going to call it target. I want to make sure this never has more than one of this component on the game object. Well, it's going to move it twice. And that should be the only variables we need. We're going to void on mouse down. And I'm just going to create a switch case statement here. And we'll go off the dir. And first case we'll have is if we're going direction up or direction down. <laughs> 
it doesn't matter which one you do first. But we will have to end in a break. And before this, I'm going to say vector three dot pos or vector three pos. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> is equal to target dot. Well, it is the transform to so target dot position. Then in here we can say pos plus equals vector three dot down. Great. I'm going to copy that whole case. Put it here. Change the case to be up. And now we'll just add up. And just because I like having a default state to handle any exceptions that happen. I'm going to go ahead and just set pos to be equal to vector three dot zero. Now I don't understand in this script how you could ever get your direction to be equal to anything but up or down, but just on the off chance that it does come through here as not being up or down, I'm just going to go ahead and just recenter the, the target. And that should be it. Let's go ahead. We'll save that off. We'll jump back into our script. Let's grab the up and the down. We'll move the move script over. We need a target. Whoops, come on, up, down, drag the target over, put that in. And then on the up, we'll go up. On the down, we'll set the direction to be down. Let's go ahead, we'll start this up. And when we click the up arrow, Nothing is happening. Let me check this out. And that's because at the end, we did not go ahead and take the target's position and update it. Kind of important. Go ahead, save that off, give it a second to recompile. We'll go ahead, we'll start our game back up and it should work. There we go, up, down, up, down, and changing colors. Let's go ahead, set this up and build it for our Android device. I've already got a video set up on how to set up an Android build. So if you need help with that, go ahead and check the playlist and we'll go ahead, hit build and run. I'm just gonna throw it in the desktop. So here we are with it up on my phone. And of course we can change the colors. And we can move it up and down, touching the buttons. So there we go, touch controls. Now the way I did it here, it'll work with more than just sprites. You can go ahead, use textures, even 3D objects. All that really matters is that it has a collider. And that is big enough to actually be able to physically touch on your screen. And as I said in the beginning of the video, there's a lot of other ways to do this. And we can look at some of those other ways. But those will be in different videos. Anyway. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>